Hey guys, Kelly Fab here, and today I'm going to be doing my 2018 New Year's resolutions update for the first quarter of the year. As you know, if it's three months, it's been the first quarter. So it is the end of March, beginning of April. It's technically the beginning of April now. But I wanted to go over all of my New Year's resolutions and let you know how I've been doing. So here we go. The very first New Year's resolution that I had was to lose some weight. So technically, since the beginning of the year, I haven't lost any pounds, but my body has been changing significantly. I've been getting significantly stronger, especially in my arms and my legs. And I've noticed that my stomach has shrunk in size. I have been taking measurements. One of my guy friends from my work actually mentioned that to me because I was feeling really demotivated one day and he was like, you know what, don't worry about the weight as much. Why don't you take body measurements because then you can see if your body's actually changing. So I took his advice and at the beginning of March I took body measurements and at the beginning of the year I actually took body measurements too and I had forgotten that I did that. So from the beginning of the year to my March measurements, I have gone down significantly in inches, but I haven't gone down in weight at all. And I think it's just because I do build my muscle mass very, very easily. If you guys want me to do a couple of videos on my like weight loss and my workout plan and my eating and stuff like that, let me know down below or just give this video a thumbs up and I can start talking a little bit more about that. I know I had mentioned about talking about some of my weight loss ideas and how I keep motivated and stuff like that. But if you guys really want to see that, give me a thumbs up on this video and I will know to do that for you guys because I know it is a hard topic to keep motivated, especially coming to the first quarter of the year. You get really motivated at the beginning of the year and then that motivation kind of slowly tapers off. Luckily, I have been staying motivated and staying eating well and keeping with my... Um, better diet plan and better workout plan that I've been doing and I've really been noticing a difference on my own body and my husband's definitely noticed a difference and it feels really good. So I haven't lost any pounds, but I have been losing inches. So I will talk about that if you guys want. The next resolution that I had was to read 12 books this year and it is in the fourth month and I was kind of planning on one book per month basically. So I did listen to two audiobooks. The first one was Rich Dad Poor Dad. I will leave everything linked down below, but the first one was Rich Dad Poor Dad and it was so good. If you guys are having any kind of money struggles or anything like that if or any or if you're even just interested in finances at all this is a really really good personal story that really was motivating to me and I really enjoyed it so that one and then there was um the New Frugality, and I can't remember who wrote that, but I listened to that audiobook as well, and it was so good, and it was talking about how things in your life don't make you happy, it's your experiences that make you happy, and spending money on something is not gonna make you happy just by having that something, and showing people that you can live in a big, nice house while you're in debt doesn't make sense. It was such a good, motivating book, and it really put me towards the no spending train for this year. Now that the Sephora VIB sale is almost done. Well, it's done for me because I'm not buying anything else. I am on a complete no buy until the VIB sale at the end of the year. So I'm really excited about that because I know I can save up a lot of money and get out, get some bills paid off, which brings me to my number three resolution was to pay off two big pieces of debt. I have to report to you guys that I did pay off one of my seven pieces of debt so far in January, the end of January, I actually paid it off and it felt so good. I have two other, and it was a credit card. I do have two other credit cards that I am paying on right now and they are almost done. They're both less than a thousand dollars. So I'm super excited to get those ones paid off. So luckily, so hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have four pieces of debt paid off out of my seven. God, that would be so incredibly nice because three of my pieces of debt are very higher, like a higher amount. I have a loan, I have my mortgage and my husband's car, which we all owe like 15,000 or more on all of those, especially the mortgage. It's like a lot more, but yeah, I'm not worried about those ones. I just want to get all these little pieces of debt paid off. So now my new goal, instead of having two of those pieces of debt, I want to have four of those pieces of debt paid off, or 
three of those pieces of debt paid off. So my first credit card and then my other two credit cards I want to have completely paid off before the cruise in November. And then I'm hoping that my car will be the next piece of debt number four paid off at the end of the year. I'm really reaching, I think I'm reaching for a lot there, but I think we can do it if I'm really, really frugal about our spending. So I'm looking forward to that. Number four is to go on more of a whole foods, plant-based diet and eat less processed foods. I do have my phases where I get into where I want cookies and chocolate and cake and Reese's and processed garbage junk food, but and then I realize how crappy I feel after I eat those foods and I start eating carrots and broccoli and veggies and fruits and peanut butter even and all of these things make me feel so much better and foods that I cook myself as opposed to going to a restaurant or going to fast food which is something we never really do to be totally honest. We only do it when we're in a really big pinch and I typically will get a salad or something like that but I have been definitely on the more whole foods plant-based diet. By the end of the year, I hope to completely cut out all processed foods and that includes like rice with prepackaged seasonings and stuff like that because I do buy rice in bulk so I can cook it and season it myself. I'm really, really excited about this and I think this is gonna definitely help with the weight loss and the inches lost on my body and I just feel so much better like I've been feeling so good now that I've been having vegetables every day with lunch I've been having my nut packs which you guys have already seen in my favorites video I've been having my nut packs every single day with lunch and I just feel so good and so energized and I don't feel deprived of food at all so it's really been nice <laughs> then number five was to continue decluttering and minimizing my life Unfortunately, I haven't done much more of that because I feel like my closet and my clothing situation is really honed down to what I really, really like and what I actually wear. I mean, I definitely could do a little bit more, which I probably will soon before the summer, but I really feel like I have it honed down to what I really like. And then a lot of other things like my beauty products and stuff, I'm not ready to declutter any more of it yet. I did do a declutter series last year, which I can link down below, but I just, I'm not quite ready to keep doing other things. I do want to keep working on the basement. We have a lot more of cleaning out and reorganizing and stuff to do in the basement. My husband wants to redo the whole basement to have like a man cave, which I'm totally cool with. But yeah, so we'll see about that and we'll see about me continuing de to declutter. But typically we just keep our house as clean and organized as we possibly can because me and my husband both feel so much better when everything is clean. So we are going to continue to do that and I hope to have a lot more cleaned out and decluttered by the next update. But right now I really haven't done much more to be completely honest. And then my number six was to meditate or learn how to start meditating and stretch every day. So the stretching part I have done every single day, morning and night, and my husband has actually gotten on this train too because he's been having a lot of hip issues. So he's been stretching every morning and every night and we both feel so much better. It's amazing how much better you can feel just by stretching your body and just moving it in ways that you don't think is gonna feel good and then it just feels so good. I don't know, it just, is so nice to stretch your body and with that I feel like I have less injury when I do stretch my body. I have been having a lot of wrist issues. You guys have seen my patch on my wrist that I've been wearing and I've been having a lot of those issues and a lot of previous ankle issues. You guys know I've had an Achilles tendon tear on my left side so my right ankle has been hurting randomly on and off and I do notice that when I make sure to do a full solid stretch morning and night every day I've been feeling so much better and it hasn't been hurting as much so I'm continuing on this train. I haven't really done much on the meditating part I do notice that I do more if I'm like kind of stuck wherever I am. So like if I'm sitting waiting for a doctor's office or I'm sitting in line at Meijer trying to check out with my groceries or if I'm in traffic and I'm just sitting and waiting, I typically will just sit there with my eyes open, just whatever, and I'll just breathe. Just like focus on my breathing. So deep breath in, deep breath out. 
and just try to calm myself, especially because my nerves get really, really bad and my anxiety gets really bad when I'm in those types of situations, especially when it's crowded. Um, my anxiety kind of shoots up the roof, but I've been just breathing in those situations and it's been super helpful. I can't even tell you how helpful that is because instead of just getting anxious about it or playing on my phone or whatever and being anxious and being nervous about it, then I'm just breathing and I'm like, okay, you're here anyways. You have to check out with your groceries today. It's gonna take time. There's three people in front of you with full cards. You know how long it's gonna take. Yes, the checkout person's going much slower than they probably could, but this is their job and sometimes I work slow at my job too. And you just have to realize that, you know, you just gotta breathe. It's going to take as much time as it's going to take anyways. The time is going to pass no matter what, so you might as well calm yourself down and not be so anxious. This is the things I say to myself, but it has been helping. So number seven is a relaxing bath at minimum one time per week. That is just a silly res resolution that I put on there. I thought it would help. It totally doesn't help. I just don't enjoy baths, to be completely honest. I really only do them when I'm really, really cold or when my body is just in sore, sore pain from working out. And I've only taken two baths this whole year so far. So I think I'm actually going to completely cut that resolution out and put something else in, which I've already added at the bottom of my page here. So the once a week bath is totally not a thing for me I just I don't enjoy them as much as I thought I would and I, I don't know I just they're just not my favorite I just I don't like sitting in my own nastiness you know even though I shower after and I rinse off and I soap my hair and everything I just don't like it I don't know I just don't like it number eight was to exercise 30 minutes five times per week minimum and I have definitely done that. So typically at the end of the night, I will go in the bedroom or stay out in the living room and I'll watch a YouTube video or I'll watch something on Netflix because you guys know we don't have cable and I will just do my arm weights, do do, squunge, do squunges, squunges and squats and lunges at the same time. I will do lunges and squats. I will do heel raises or calf raises, whatever you want to call them. I will do my stretches. I will do yoga poses. I will do tons of different movement techniques just to get a little bit of that exercise in, or I will go on a 5K walk. So right now the weather has gotten bad again in Michigan. It's freaking freezing and windy outside. It was like snowing where my husband's working a little bit more up north, but yeah, <laughs> that really sucks. But um, with that, I've been going to the gym more because it's been worse weather. So I've been kind of trading that off. In the nicer weather days, I go for a walk or a run and I've been trying to get in at least a 5K every single day and that's 3.2 miles. So, and I've been definitely doing that consistently. Just when I go to the gym, I tend to work out with the free weights or on the machines more because I don't have that accessible here at home, but I can walk on the treadmill anytime or I can walk outside anytime. So I will typically trade off weight training when I'm at the gym and cardio at home. So I've been definitely doing that, sticking to it. And when I don't do it, I don't feel as good. Like I don't have as much energy. I don't feel, I feel more anxious because I know I should be doing it and I'm not. And I just feel so much better about myself when I'm exercising and when I'm motivated and when I'm going and doing and when I have things to do. So that's been definitely helping out a lot. Number nine is I wanted to set a budget and stick to it. So what I've been doing every single week, we get paid every single Friday because my husband gets paid on the opposite Friday that I get paid on and we both get paid every other week. So we get paid every Friday. So every Friday I pull out money from the ATM. So I pull out money, I'm not gonna tell you my exact numbers because they kind of have been fluctuating a little bit as we've been learning how to budget a little bit better. But I will pull out money for groceries, cash money for groceries, cash for David's gas. I don't pull out cash for my gas because I go to Speedway. So I just put $100 on my Speedway card and that lasts me about the whole month. Um, actually a little bit more than a month will last me because I don't drive very far to work. 
and then I will pull out spending money for the both of us for the week and that's typically about $40 each and then whatever we don't use for the week my husband usually just keeps his in his wallet and uses it you know whenever he needs it but I will put it in an envelope in my drawer and it's been building so fast because I haven't been spending the extra money that I would typically spend on items and it's so nice because I just feel like I'm doing so much better at figuring out what I really like and what I really want and need versus what I just kind of see and it's there and oh look that would be a cool item to have. So I feel like I've been doing a lot better about that type of stuff and I've been really honing in my spending. Not as much since the 21 Days of Beauty. I did kind of go a little bit crazy. I will show you guys my haul when all of my items come in the mail but I have been doing so much better with other things. Like when I go to the grocery store, I literally just go and get what I need as opposed to going and getting this, that, and you know, whatever else sounds good at the time. I don't go to the grocery store hungry anymore either. That's a huge mistake, but I've been definitely budgeting and setting aside the money that I don't spend to see how much I can build up by the end of the year and that's been helping out a ton. So my number 10 was to spend more time outside, get out in the sun, get out in the fresh air and I have been doing that every single nice day. There was a couple days in January and a couple days in February and in March that I was able to go outside for a nice long walk and to just hang out outside with my son. My husband even barbecued one of those days and we just stood outside and hung out and just enjoyed Enjoyed being outside in the nice weather and I plan to continue to do this definitely geared more towards the summer and the spring and the fall time but we are in the spring it's very very cold again like I already said so today I won't be getting outside at all it looks sunny and nice but it's definitely not and yeah so I just plan to keep doing that I do feel like my mood is definitely lifted when the weather is nicer I do have the seasonal depression and it gets really bad in the winter time but going to sun, going to Florida this winter really really helped that I got it I got that seasonal depression really bad when I got back because the weather was so terrible when I got back but it's been getting so much better now just seeing the sun on an everyday basis and having my curtains open every day and having the light come in just makes me feel so much better so I will definitely continue to be getting outside every single day. Number 11 is to keep a positive attitude and I mostly mean this at work. Sometimes I get really down at work because I just don't want to be there. I'd rather be home with my family. I'd rather be doing things um, with my friends. I would rather be with my mom hanging out or my dad hanging out and it just kind of sucks <laughs> being at work sometimes because I'm not a work from home type of person. I do go to a job every single day or almost every day and I work a minimum of eight hours a day and you know it just kind of sucks having to get up and go to work but I've been really trying to wake up with a positive attitude every day and say you know even though I'm on a sucky shift today I'm gonna be there no matter what the time is gonna go by no matter what so I might as well be moving my body and me be working and helping people I am an x-ray tech at a hospital so I do help people and sometimes on my worst days I get a patient and I'm just super nice to them because I like to kill my patients with kindness basically maybe that's not a very good pun to use here but um, or phrase but I like to really get them in a better mood because they're stuck at the hospital. They're not feeling good, they're sick, whatever's going on, they had surgery, whatever. They don't want to be there as much as I don't, but I can always lighten their mood. And sometimes I have people just talk to me just because they don't have anybody else to talk to. And it's kind of sad because of that fact, but it's like, you know, I'm their interaction for the day. They can't go outside and go for a walk. They can't go to the grocery store or go to their friend's house because they are at the hospital. So they can only see who comes to them. And, you know, I've been trying to keep a more positive attitude about helping other people and not making everything about me. And I seem, it seems like when I do that and I make things at work more about my coworkers and helping them out and my patients and making them feel good, it makes me feel better because it's not about me when I'm at work. Yes, I'm there to make money and to help and to, you know, do whatever I can to work for my job, but 
I'm not there for me, I'm there for everybody else. So I need to try to remember that and keep a positive attitude because sometimes I go into work and I just don't have a good attitude, but by the end of the day, I have a way better attitude because I've let the day just take me and just say, okay, you know, the day is going to be however it's going to be and, you know, I can ask for help and if I get it, cool. If not, then, well, it, the day is going to pass no matter what. So trying to keep a more positive attitude and I think I've been doing a lot better with that even when I start out like I said when I start out having a bad attitude I typically end the day having a better attitude so I'm gonna keep trying to do that and keep on this positive train because I feel so much better when I do. But the final thing that I added in for this resolutions is actually more of like a social media type of thing and it was to upload YouTube videos three days a week and I've been very very consistent with it. I think I only missed two weeks out of this year so far. Um, one of them was the week after my vacation when I was feeling really down and yucky basically and then the other week was recently because um i don't remember what was going on but i had something i think i like worked every single day and i was really tired oh i was sick i was sick that whole week that's what it was and my son was sick and everybody just wasn't feeling good so typically i have been posting minimum three days a week and i have been doing really really well with that and on top of that i really want to start posting on my instagram more often you guys know i don't really go on facebook ever which is why i don't have it listed below i really don't go on snapchat or twitter either i really just go on instagram and youtube but I really want to start posting more often on my beauty Instagram page which is um, califab underscore beauty and then my regular like family lifestyle Instagram page which is just califab91 and yeah I just want to start posting on those more often and being more of an influence to positive attitude and positive thinking and good things that are going on in my life as opposed to you know just always looking at the negative because the negative just sucks and I feel like Instagram is a very, very positive place where Facebook is a very negative place. And I don't know if you guys feel the same way about that as me, but whenever I go on Instagram, I always feel good. I always feel motivated. I always feel inspired. But whenever I go on Facebook, it's always somebody that died or something bad that's going on in the news or, you know, some terrible thing that happened to somebody and, you know, somebody's car got stolen or broken into or whatever. And I'm just sick of Facebook. I just... Ugh, I don't want that bad negative energy in my life anymore. I go on there once in a great while, which is barely ever. I just don't like it. Instagram is where I like to be because it's so positive and YouTube is very positive for me because of the channels that I watch and the people that I watch are very motivating and uplifting for me. And yeah, so those are my goals that I want to continue going on and I will do a mid-year update here before or around my birthday in July. July 1st is my birthday actually so hopefully I can do a mid-year update for you and I hope this inspired you guys to really start thinking about your resolutions from the beginning of the year and maybe going back and revisiting them and seeing what are you doing, what are you really working and striving towards and what goals can you can you change like the taking the bath thing? I realized that that's not a real, that's not a real thing for me. I don't like taking baths. So why am I going to put that in my resolutions if I really don't like it? You know, so go back and revisit those goals and those resolutions that you made. Maybe you wrote them down. Maybe you just thought about them in your head, but go back and revisit them and see what changes can you make now for the next three months or the next quarter of the year and see where you are at the mid Point of the year and I hope this motivates you guys in some way shape or form and like I said I will be doing a mid-year update because honestly I want these videos to look back on for me I want to go back to my beginning of 2018 resolutions when I'm at the beginning of 2019 and see how much my life has changed and how much I was able to accomplish this year from my list and just see where I'm at so I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and I will see you guys all in the next one and thank you so much for watching. Bye!